So as always, you'll find a comfortable seat. Elevating the pelvis on the cushion, allowing for the knees to drop below the pelvis. We'll start with feeling all the parts of the skin that are touching the ground, the sit bones touching the cushion, the lower legs touching the cushion and the floor. And resting the face, resting the eyelids. Relaxing the skin on the face. letting it melt and settling into the ease and peacefulness of your being we'll roll the shoulders up to the ears and back and down pull the belly button slightly in Slightly tucking the chin, pulling the top of the head for the ceiling, elongating the spine. And starting with the throat friction breathing, bringing your entire awareness into the throat, into the larynx, awakening the space of the throat chakra. which helps to awaken all of the energy centers in the body. So creating that ocean sound in the throat. And hearing yourself breathing. So the sound reinforces the awareness on the breath. And then while maintaining the throat friction breathing, Ujjayi breath, 
We're also bringing the attention to the center of the forehead, the space between the eyebrows. So maintaining awareness in both spaces, in the throat and in the Ajna Chakra, between the eyebrows. Being aware of both at the same time. And allowing the physical vibrations in the throat and the larynx to awaken the space between the eyebrows. So using the physical vibrations of the sound to awaken the more subtler realms of the vibration of the third eye. Keeping the throat breathing still quite audible. Just keeping the awareness on both the throat and the space between the eyebrows. And then gently reducing the throat friction breathing slightly and bringing more attention into the space between the eyebrows. And paying attention to any hints of color, shapes, or forms or patterns appearing in the space of the third eye. not trying to make anything happen just being open to receiving the patterns colors and shapes
And then slowly shifting the awareness from any shapes and colors and patterns into the background space. So now paying attention to the darkness that is in the background, that is always there. Bringing your attention to the quality of the darkness, maybe it's a dark blue quality or a dark purple quality to the background. And just bringing towards your attention its infiniteness and its ever permeating quality. Still maintaining slight awareness in the throat and at the same time the background darkness that is in the third eye behind the closed eyelids. Just observing, just watching the darkness with the blue, the purple qualities to it. And still maintaining the awareness in the throat.
then gently withdrawing the attention from the black background space and allowing the body to be taken by any movement maybe gentle rocking maybe any spiraling movement that arises from within the body from within the being maybe there's a spiraling vortex appearing in front of you behind you just allowing for the physical body to go along with any movement maybe it's a slight buzzing what do you feel in the body maybe a slight vibration maybe it's the pulsing of the blood within the body just allowing the body to be taken by that movement however subtle it might be And slowly reducing the throat friction even more and withdrawing the attention from any sense of movement in the third eye. Just bringing the attention back to the space between the eyebrows. And bringing that attention down from the space between the eyebrows into the throat. So again, becoming aware of the breathing in and out in the throat and the friction it creates. And then gently bringing the attention even lower from the throat 
all the way down into the heart space. And we'll move into the meditation on the Anahata Chakra. So we'll come back to the short practice we did last time. So you can bring one finger into the center of the chest, just where the heart is. And gently press with one finger in the front of the chest and the other arm can go behind and press on the spine. So pressing both fingers together for about one minute. Just to become aware of the physical location of the Anahata Chakra. And trust yourself that you will intuitively know the location. It's wherever your fingers land naturally. Just keep offering gentle pressure into the skin. And bringing all your awareness into the space between your fingers in the chest cavity. And then releasing the fingers and the pressure and just maintaining the awareness and the sensations that are left over on the skin and bringing the awareness to the space between these two points inside the body and dwelling in that sensation. And you can mentally say anahata and keep repeating that for as long as it feels good to awaken the anahata chakra. And for the rest of the meditation, if you lose that sensation of the physical location of the heart, you can always come back to pressing two fingers around the heart space to remind you of the physical location and to keep dwelling in that space with the mind throughout the meditation. So continuing from last time, mention that as the Anahata Chakra awakens, all of the desires of the heart start materializing in this world. So it becomes extremely important to keep the mind and the thoughts clean and pure as you become more powerful. So it becomes extremely important to maintain vigilance over the quality of the thoughts that are coming in and staying vigilant also of how long you're allowing yourself to dwell in the negative spaces 
and shifting the thought patterns from negative patterns into patterns that allow more hope and faith and developing these qualities within the heart space as well so maybe that practice becomes just noticing with more frequency when a negative mind pattern takes hold of the mind and then remembering that because you are in the driver's seat you choose what you dwell in actively replacing those patterns with patterns that are more helpful patterns of thinking that are more positive So when we work on the Anahata Chakra, we are developing the qualities of hope and possibility and developing the qualities of being completely at peace with yourself, with others and the whole community at large. So in order to start developing the Anahata Chakra, you can also start and developing this one thought with great conviction, with resolution. And this thought is that the whole world is in me or that I am in everyone and developing this quality of seeing parts of yourself in everyone around you and also seeing that you embody qualities of everyone that that possibility of embodying different qualities of others is also within you. So the whole world is in me or I am in everyone. I'm just starting developing that vision of seeing yourself reflected in others and seeing others reflected in you, in your being. And that alone will allow to develop empathy and compassion for the self and others. And eventually, because we recognize both positive and negative qualities within ourselves and within others, with that understanding, we can start developing a sense of unconditional love, a love that can permeate your entire being, a love that is not attached to outcomes, it's not attached to people behaving a specific way because you develop this wisdom of knowing that good and bad exists in everything.
and that beyond the dualities of good and bad, we can still feel at peace with the entire life, with the entire universe. So the best mantra for the heart center is Om Shanti. That feels good in the body to say internally. So Om is the universal cosmic vibration which permeates the entire creation. And Shanti means peace. The vibration of pronouncing these two sounds, that vibration will help to awaken the qualities of the heart. So the development of the Anahata Chakra awakens these refined emotions in the brain and its awakening is characterized by this feeling of universal unlimited love for all beings. And there's two expressions of, of compassion and love. One is very much a human compassion. And the other one is a spiritual compassion. The human compassion examples would be devoting yourself to charity work, donating money somewhere, There's always an element of, of selfishness in this human compassion and empathy. And this selfishness lies in this sense of knowing that I will feel better if I perform these actions. And when you awaken the Anahata Chakra, you start awakening a sense of spiritual compassion, which doesn't have the selfishness element, where the behaviors you do will come from the space of just wanting to contribute to life, wanting to make others existence better you will notice that the spiritual compassion doesn't have an element of expecting something in return So something that will help with opening the heart center is observing beauty and finding beauty around you. And maybe that's through music and art and sculpture, and literature and poetry. These are all 
expressions of beauty in this world. And if you allow yourself to dwell in the beauty, you'll start developing the spiritual heart and the attitude of looking for beauty in every expression of life. And so traditionally in yoga, there have been two paths that help develop the heart center, the bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion, devotion to a guru or an expression of God. And the second path has always been the karma yoga, which is a practice of doing a physical doing of activity that is free of expectation or free of any return on your doing And another aspect of opening the heart and getting to the space of doing without expecting something in return or even expecting to feel a specific way once you do a certain action. The other aspect of developing the heart space is developing what in India they call siddhis which are special powers. And so each chakra has its own special powers that you come into once that chakra is fully developed. And they say that the, the psychic propensities of Anahata chakra are this complete emotional balance and the ability to communicate externally as well as internally which means that you might start hearing voices or sounds that are coming from other realms and so It's important to maintain that equanimity of the mind if and when that starts happening. And that's why the development of a sense of groundedness through the root chakra is important as well. And that's why the development of the Kundalini energy starts from the root chakra so one needs to be extremely well rooted in the sense of groundedness so a lot of people hear voices and we call that psychosis because there is a lacking of a sense of groundedness and being as well but we all have these capacities to perceive sounds from other realms 
And the imbalance only happens when there's lack of groundedness at the same time as these perceptive qualities are developed. And so as the heart chakra develops, we start noticing that we have more of a pull towards our artistic expression, maybe writing, maybe poetry. There's more of a pull towards beauty in your life. And so with the awakening of Anahata, you will also develop a sense of non-attachment to the worldly things. And you'll develop a constant feeling of, of optimism and enthusiasm for life. And this understanding that the good and the bad coexist, but that there's also a world that is beyond this duality of good and bad and the labels that we attach to everything we see in our experience. So once you start getting rid of the attachments to the worldly things, the mind will start becoming more relaxed and free and peaceful. And the, with the discovery of this true freedom within the mind, these pleasures of a dualistic life will become more and more meaningless. Let's bring the awareness back into the throat region. Concentrate the awareness in the throat. Just become aware of the breath in the throat. This is the last practice we'll do, which is called entering the heart space. So the first stage is only being aware of any sensations of the breath in the throat. And then add the awareness of the ingoing breath from the throat downwards. So you're not concerned with the outgoing breath. Your attention is only occupied with the ingoing breath in the throat.
and then start becoming aware of the inflowing breath in the throat passing within the network of the diaphragm so start becoming aware of the diaphragm the rising and falling of this muscular floor that's separating the chest and lungs above from the abdominal organs below so as you breathe keep the attention on the diaphragm so with each inhalation diaphragm drops into the abdomen a little Increasing the pressure there and allowing for the navel to expand. And with every exhalation, the abdomen contracts and the diaphragm is rising. And the lungs are emptying. If there is no physical awareness of the diaphragm moving, just engaging the imagination. And visualizing the diaphragm moving up and down. And then we move into stage two, awareness of the heart space. You'll beca become aware of the akasha, which is the space within which the diaphragm is operating. So with the inhale, you feel the space is filling up. So only be aware of the process of filling up the space. So this process of filling up is only a basis for the awareness of the vast space. The process of feeling the breath is only the basis for experiencing the heart space. So now start becoming aware of the space in the heart so take your awareness directly there, the space in the heart, inside the body. And feel the space within the heart center. It is contracting and expanding with the rhythm of your natural breathing. So the breath is only the basis, the process of filling up is only the basis. So now go on to comprehending the whole space around the heart. Just allow the mind and the awareness to dwell there.
until you are aware of the space alone around the heart. And then feeling the contraction and expansion of this vast space. It's taking place with the rhythm of your natural breathing. Just let the breathing be natural and spontaneous without making inhales and exhales shorter or longer, deeper or more shallow. Just let the breath be spontaneous. Maintain this awareness in the space, in the heart, and dwell in that. Then we're moving into stage three of the meditation, vision of blue lotus and the lake. So if the awareness of this expansion and contraction of the heart space is constant and stabilized, after some time, Visions may start manifesting here in this space. So you don't have to visualize or imagine anything. The vision will come by itself when the awareness of the heart is constant. And this image is of a lake and a blue lotus. So if these words evoke any imagery, then you can stay with that. And if not, then just listening and staying with the awareness of just the heart space, expanding and contracting with the inhales and exhales. Then we'll move into stage four, ending the practice. Just become aware of the natural inflowing and outflowing breath in the throat again. And just withdrawing your awareness from the heart space. And just bring the awareness to the natural breath in the throat.
Just maintain awareness of the inflowing and the outflowing breath in the throat. And then in order to fully close the practice, we'll chant Om. So I will do it externally and then you are free to also chant externally with the sound or internally just staying with it. Om. And just staying for a few moments with this inner leftover vibration from the sound. then whenever you're ready you can release the posture and slowly slowly start opening the eyes maybe first looking to the floor in front of you just make it gentle coming back to the room <laughs> 